Welcome to another episode of Power Alphas. I'm one of your co-hosts, Savvy Piscatelli. And as always, my beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous fiance, <laughs> Amanda Sacramano. How you doing, baby? I'm doing great. Welcome, everyone, to another episode. Happy to be here. How are you doing? Excited. Your hair looks good today, baby. Oh, Just I washed, washed it. it. <laughs> I like it. For those of you who have long extensions, you know we don't wash our hair that very often. It's kind of gross, but... Fresh, fresh wash. It looks good. Uh, you just got a haircut. Yeah, I got a little haircut. All Sav fresh. Savvy likes getting his haircut before the podcast. Yeah, right before the podcast. Yeah. You know, makes you feel it's also good. Also, right over here. You know, it's always big. I always said, you know, you, you look good, you feel good, you feel good, you perform good, mm -hmm. right? You know? That is true. Listen, presentation of your appearance is important. Very I believe important. it. I believe it. It, it kind of it shows uh, it shows who you are as a man. Right? When somebody sees you for the first time, it's, it identifies a man or a woman. It just it shows what kind of personality you have. So you first know, I like impression. to feel good. First impression. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I'm excited, but um, we just got back from a great vacation. Yeah, we had a little Montana. scare though. We had a little scare that kind of. Uh, Made me a little nervous. I'm gonna be completely honest here. I, uh, you know, Mandy was doing so good on the slopes. She hasn't skied in <laughs> so like good. a year, about two years now, and uh, she was getting a little confident, a little cocky, <laughs> and uh, she had a little fall. Um, no, twist. first of all, I had a couple falls. Yeah, um, you had a couple yard sales. A couple for yard sure. sales. Didn't even know where my skis were. Um, <laughs> At one point, they got really mad at me, the group that we were with, because the second or third fall, it was it was bad. I kind of like slid face first, and then I just kind of laid there. And you know, I guess the protocol I don't ski a lot is you know at least get a thumbs up that you're good. Oh, I was so, so everyone mad. was like came by and they're like, "You good, dude?" I was so so. At least give a thumbs up. So for me, my and my angle, <laughs> my angle was so bad because I was I was behind her. Like I always want to stay behind her to make sure she was okay and I could watch. That. So I'm probably like maybe 30, 40 yards behind her, and then all of a sudden she started like going down the hill, and, and I knew she was gonna fall. So she falls and she like face plants. Right, and I'm like, babe, you okay? And she does not move. Guys, I was blown. So I start, as fuck. so I scream down the hill on my skis, and I'm not great either. But I was go all fast, and I slide up next to her, and I'm like, babe, are you okay? And and then she's like laughing, she's like laughing. I thought she was like unconscious because like she was literally like like one leg was in the air, the ski was over there, like her it leg was. was like cross-eyed. So I was like, she eagle. actually she actually like looked like. Like she almost like a chalk body on like the side of the road. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, yo, and, and I go up to her and she's laughing. I'm like, what the fuck? Typical Mandy sense of humor and you know, I take it too far. But I, first of all, I was blown. So I literally was like, I need a breather. And we had skied like that whole morning, first day. I probably should have taken a break at that moment, but the whole group got there. We were excited. Yep. I was also trying to keep up with a four and five year old that were like- Way better than us. Way better than us. Um, it was actually pretty comical. So uh, I won one fall that I did right before that, I avoided the kids because I knew if I hit the kids, that'd be an issue. I'd rather just, you know, hit myself hit or the snow? hit the snow, hit whatever the snow. it was. So I literally was <laughs> flying down um, the, the one of the slopes and I remember seeing Rob there and the kids were right there and Rob's like face, he was like, you got this, you're good. And I had no control because I was going fast. And when you go fast and you're not experienced, the stopping is the hardest part, right? So I was still doing pizza and <clears throat> pizza. I was pizzaing all the way down until my legs got so blown. And I was in like a full squat. Uh, Logan was dying because he's like, you're going to get so blown because you're literally like in a full squat. I'm like, yeah, at least I got that down. So as I came around to try to stop, I just was like, screw it, I can't hit the kids. So I went flying up and that was a big yard sale. That was when I couldn't find my skis. I was like, I'm good. <laughs> just Dude, give me a couple minutes. I realize skiing is a lot like golf. Doesn't matter how athletic you are. You can't just pick it up and be great at it. You no. You just cannot. Like it's like an experience thing. Like these kids on the mountain were like four, five years old just flying by us because they've been doing it for like three years already and it's like that's the thing it was we pretty did, unique it was we, it was fun to see it was and we did learn that too from the first time we went out there um three years ago our first time skiing you know savvy uh -huh. i still laugh at some of the videos i have of him because he's so athletic in everything that he does i've never seen him pick up anything that he didn't know how to like do whatever sport it was like he's just athletically gifted so when he first went on skis I was hysterical because it's so weird to see someone so athletically gifted, like, like, 
you know, not knowing what to do. And like, it's hard though. Like you can't blame him. But me, I just had my camera out taking videos. And the best was when he was like sliding down a hill and his coach for 20 years, Rob, our good friends were with us. And he was like, I can't stop. Why can't I stop? And Rob was like, gravity. <laughs> And it was just really funny. I have the whole thing on video. I actually uh, remember that night is a true story. It's how competitive I am, Ben. You got to hear the story. Oh yeah. So that so my, my my one of my best friends, Rob, he's my trainer for twenty years. Um, great guy. He's you know he's helped me through my whole career. Um, and uh, he always like brags about how good of an athlete I am mm -hmm. to other people, right? So. He's always like talking about how, you know, I'm one of the most gifted explosive athletes, da, da, da. So long story short, he's at the mountain like a month before us, and he keeps telling me, oh, my, one of my good friends is coming, pro athlete, played in the NFL, gifted as can be, so explosive, <laughs> like he's going to be great at this, right? So I get there, and like anticipation, people are like waiting to see me ski, and I never <laughs> skied. And boy, am I horrible for the first like two hours. Like I'm talking about like, it was so bad. This is a true story, Ben. It's, I, it was so bad that... I actually laid in bed that night because Mandy was laughing and making fun of me the whole night. Still I like laid in bed and I was like, all right, Sabby, you got two options. <laughs> never ski again. <laughs> like literally never ski again or you figure this the fuck out <laughs> fast. Right? <laughs> so That's I'm so competitive. I barely slept that night. And I'm like, yeah, you know he what? Was really mad. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna figure this shit out because now I'm like embarrassed that my boy, like I made, I made my boy look bad. Mandy's laughing like, hysterically loving this shit. So, so I'm just as listen, bad. Too. By any means, I'm not good. But what's really cool is like every year I got better. And then like even this trip, like the last day we skied was Friday. And it was like my best day by far. I was going down like blues, a little, okay, you, little you light were, blacks. Like, you were feeling good. And I was feeling, and it's funny because it's like it was my last day. So all the, the message out there is don't give up. Keep trying. <laughs> Remember, a winner is just a loser that tries one more time. True. So that being said, man, the trip but, was great. We had a beautiful house on the mountain. Um, we, we airbnb did. um had a nice hot tub. Also, guys, Savvy definitely improved his like gear. As So the first time we went skiing, I don't know what made him think that this was like a good outfit. His friend gave it to him and his friend's oh, like a little bit jokes. bigger. He had this big marshmallow white jacket, oh, yeah? bubble jacket. <laughs> <laughs> these huge like parachute pants ski pants and so he's coming down the bunny slope and i have the video i might put it up here oh, yeah, and he's jokes. coming down <laughs> he can't stop <laughs> the best is ben, look at this goes, shit. he goes all the way down <laughs> as he comes finally to round the corner and i'm videotaping the whole thing there's like a little little like hill, hill thing I, yep. which may obviously made him stop a little bit so he goes up and he he stops you know just velocity come right comes right and he comes right back down and just falls <laughs> It's like a big oh, marshmallow. Hey, hey, how about okay. you? How about you get the so, lipstick on your teeth right now? Okay, <laughs> all right, just to make it fun of me. She got lipstick on her have. teeth. Yeah, you got a little lipstick, lipstick on your teeth. Must be my lip yeah, whatever you have on your teeth. Oh, okay. Well, all right, change the subject. Well, wait, I'm not done. No, you are done. Hold on. You are done. Hold on. I just wanted to. Um, yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, end it. she yard sailed like crazy last trip. I, I didn't guess laugh I'm at like. Her. Also, I I don't know why, but I always have lipstick on my teeth. Yeah. Last going on with that. Um, so. Yeah, so we had a great time. Definitely a little bit of a scare. However, I am good. I've been running this week. My knee is great. Yes. Uh, thank gosh. Knees really scare me. I've also never had an injury in any of my careers. So the thought of that really kind of scared me. So I think it was more like a mental thing as well. Um, but I really did like the way I stopped. I kind of tweaked it. But um, I don't know. I guess I was lucky and I have strong bones or something. I don't know. But so great trip. And uh, Montana is definitely a lot different from where we're from. It seems very wholesome and genuine people and nobody dresses up, which is great. I kind of love that for uh, <laughs> Mandy actually said that she was she wasn't gonna bring her makeup bag, and I was like, "You're not gonna bring your makeup bag?" Yeah, because nobody wears makeup out there. Yeah, it's, it's great. Like, it is I mean, nice. I brought a little bit, and like going out, you don't have to dress up, so it's a nice change of pace. We had a great time. Um, I can never live there, but it's great to visit. For exactly, sure. good for to sure. go for a little bit, but yeah. no, I can never live no, there. Never. But at least <laughs> um, that scare was uh, a false alarm. So. Mm -hmm. That was um, but it was an exciting week. But the funny right. part is, and we'll end it here, the funny part was, and we posted a video, is that like I was bragging that I haven't fallen yet, and I was actually pretty surprised, not skiing for two years, how like 
decent I was in the beginning. And I was like, yeah, I haven't fallen yet. And then all of a sudden, literally like 20 minutes later, as we were going up the ski lift down that mountain is when I yard sailed like three yeah, times. And you didn't fall because you were going knee. with three-year-olds on the bunny slope. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> That's why you didn't fall, but okay. I no, mean... I'm just joking. Actually, to be honest with you, it was actually very hot that day and the snow was like slushy and it was melting. And she yeah, was, honestly, she got fatigued. She actually was doing really, really good. And she started to get fatigued because she does so much pizza. And anybody knows that skiing pizza kills your legs. So she Can't actually she actually pizza. should have went down for lunch. But again, we were all kind of excited. It was our first day. So she was between the being fatigued and being a little bit of like a bluish, which she maybe not should have been on a blue slope yet. But uh I should have took took a lunch break and got yeah, some real took pizza a lunch break. instead of going <laughs> yeah, yeah. down the whole mountain. <laughs> My ass was so but, sore. Uh, yeah, so well, that that was a uh, a great, a great um Great okay. trip. But I will say this, to lead us in another question I want to ask some of the people listening, we're going in next, you know, we're going in April. We're going to be in April. We're in April, right? So yes. we're three months into the new year. I know last week on our vacation, we kind of ate like crap. And we had like, we've been, you know, one of our biggest New Year's resolutions was to continue to eat a little cleaner during mm -hmm. the week. Um, are you back on track right there? Yeah. I mean, last week, you know, was, I don't think it was as bad as we thought it was because we had our breakfasts. I cooked um, yeah, we our did. eggs with avocado and our toast. So I don't think we were that bad last week. Like, yeah, of course we drank a little bit more than we normally do. Um, we were still kind of worked out as far as like with the the cardio. Working out, yeah. yeah. But I've been back on track. Um, I checked in with my coach this morning actually, and all is good. My abs are still there. Yeah. I saw that, a little more. I saw that picture on Instagram. <laughs> you looking jacked. It's great when the thing is, you know, I always preach about balance, but it's like we can go away for a week and get off track a little bit because our bodies are so um, used to getting back into it so fast, which is a blessing, That's obviously, true. as yep. well. Like, you know, we can go off a little bit, but then two, three days into drinking a ton of water and being back on track and our workouts and all that stuff, like, I feel right back to where I was. Absolutely, yeah. But that's because we're consistent. Mm -hmm. And that's the different, like, you know, you can't just do that and think it's going to be fine when you're not consistent all, you know, the every day out of the year. 100%. Or most days yeah. of the year. Even, like... Like we always we preach, I, I'm a big believer consistency is key. Um, you know, we both I took like six days off of the weight room, and but what's what's exciting about that is that it made me so hungry to be in the weight room Monday morning. Like when Monday morning came, yeah, I was so too. excited to get up. I felt refreshed. I felt rejuvenated. Um, and then you, you, we were still skiing every day, so we were getting the cardio in. But um, like you said, you can do that if you're really consistent. Yeah. You know, you can't just take six days off, 12 days off, you know, no, so, but I will work. tell you this, what's funny though, is I haven't told you this. I, my first like chest day was on Monday. I was actually extremely sore and I went oh, light yeah. because I took six days off. It was like, Same. your body is so, it's so funny how it will, it will bounce back, but it's like, you take a couple days off. It will tell you boom, right away. Mm -hmm. that, hey buddy, you took some time off. So, and I think we worked different muscles while we were skiing. Absolutely. So I will say, I think yeah. that's why we were sore in other places. Like oh, I woke up yesterday and I was like, couldn't move for a second. My back yeah. was really locked up. Um, I think when you work different muscles that we're not used to, like going up those hills with those poles. Different. Yep. That's that's a workout. Was well, different. So. But now we're home, and this week I will be flying to Philly. Yes, for another WrestleMania big appearance. Mania week. Um, very excited about that. Do you I think will... you'll get a matching Cartier bracelet for your other wrist now, uh, or I what? I kind of hope so, because the thing is with Cartier bracelets, you actually can wear like a bunch. Multiple. Multiple. Mm. So I love like that gold one. Mm. Wink. A wink. Yeah, okay. Um, just kidding, guys. Um, but um, yeah, so this this weekend I will be at WrestleCon. I got my schedule right now. It is Friday 9 to 2 at WrestleCon, Saturday 9 to 2 at WrestleCon, and then I will be hosting the tailgate party with Kurt Angle Saturday from 2 to 4, I believe. Pretty sure that's the right time. Um, I'll be posting on social media as well. Um, so come on by. There's a lot of uh, guests coming to that as well. So it should be fun. And I'm excited to see a bunch of my old wrestling friends. I know the girls were texting me from NXT, um, Daria, and uh, so on. So that'll be fun. And um, yeah, It should be exciting. I mean, WrestleMania, yeah. it's like the... 
It's WWE Super Bowl, you yep. know, so that whole week is Crazy week. everybody. I mean, I know WWE is the <clears> mecca, <throat> but there's so many different wrestling organizations out there. So everyone's going to be there. It's going to be exciting. Um, I'm excited for you. You know, come back and see your old friends. Yeah. See all your fans. Yeah, all my fans. It's going to be fun. So yeah, awesome. I've also never done a WrestleCon before because, you know, when you're in WWE, you're not really um, allowed to do those. So. Uh, I heard WrestleCon's like really a lot of fun, and it's like one of the biggest ones because yeah, I might have to week. come and be your bodyguard this weekend. We yeah, don't know yet. I thought yet. you were hired as my bodyguard. But we don't what know happened? yet. It's up in the air. It's <laughs> up in the air. But no, I'm excited actually to see WrestleMania. I, I want to see this Rock story unfold. The Rock I do too. story has to unfold, and I can't wait to watch it. I will say I am enjoying um, watching some of the Rock stuff with Cody. You know, last week it was. It feels like they're they're pushing the envelope a little bit. I mean, I know it's The Rock, and he maybe can get a little, get away with a little more than others. But um, I feel like, uh, yeah, they're pushing it a little bit, and I, it's it's interesting to see. Well, let's get something straight. When you're on the board and you own part of the company, you <laughs> right. can do whatever the f you want. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna tell you no. no. <laughs> That's for but sure. But the thing that really intrigues me, I mean, Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, are you mm. serious right now? Like That's Mike wild. Tyson, living legend, against Jake Paul, the YouTuber. Let me tell you something, man. This is uh, unbelievable to me from a lot of directions because one is, this is like a, a lose-lose, win-win for nobody in my opinion because you have a legend who's 58 years old. I don't care that he was the baddest man on the planet at one point. You're still 58 years yeah. old, right? And I'm not saying that he can't win this fight. But you're putting up against a guy who's in his mid-20s, who probably, you know, tip my hat off to him. He's doing a great yeah, job of marketing. Yeah, I he's not just a YouTuber. No, he's I not. No, listen, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not. I, I, I take this back, he's not. What he's done has been unbelievable. Yeah. I admire it. But a guy's 27, or I think 27 years old. He's in his prime. He's probably taking good supplements. He's probably got some of the best trainers. He's on a good regimen. Like, that is such a mismatch. Now, I'm not saying Mike can't win, but like, I don't even know if Mike can take punches anymore. That's what I worry about. I saw a little video of him training, and yeah, I was but I heard that was impressed. but I heard that was years ago though. Oh really? Yeah, I heard I heard they were like putting out these false videos. And I don't know if it's true though. Um, but my boy Alan called me actually the other night, and he said he saw Mike Tyson down in Miami, and yeah. he said he looked great. Really? He said he's training. You can tell he's training for real. Wow. So it's going to be intriguing in that aspect. It's going to be very intriguing. But um, you know, I mean. Like, what if he loses, though? I like, know. So, like, what's the payoff, in a sense? Like you said, is it, what, yeah, is it really what, like a lose? Like, it's almost like, okay, if Mike Tyson loses, like, oh, man, the guy's 58 years old, right? He's 58 years old. The guy, does it take away guy, from his equity? Does it take away from le legacy? I don't think so. But but then it's like, if he wins, right, then it's like, oh, he knocked out a former YouTuber. He didn't even knock out, like, a real boxer. But I do think Jake Paul but is Jake a real Paul boxer. Is, yeah. He's legit. Listen, the guy has skill. The guy is is a is a good athlete, right? He's he's actually turned himself into a marketing genius. Mm -hmm. um, but I just don't like the situation because in hindsight, you have a 27-year-old who's yeah. in his prime, who's in great shape, um, who's training hard, and at such a disadvantage of a man who – I don't even know if he has the reaction time anymore to get mm -hmm. out of the way. Right? 58, you said he is? 58, Mike Tyson. Wow. I mean, don't get me wrong. If Mike Tyson connects, you're probably going to die. Like yeah. probably has, but the problem is, it's like if you just stand there and let him hit you is one thing, but he's not going to stand and let him hit him. And I think it's just one of them things where, you know, yeah. hey, listen, God bless both of them. They're both probably making boatloads of money. Yeah. Um, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to watch it. it. I'm going to be intrigued. I agree with what you're saying, though, in the sense of like, at 58 years old, are you, I don't care who you are. You're not going to be as quick no, as, no. as a kid, as a, I shouldn't say kid, but really, I mean, yeah, a kid in their 20s. Exactly right. <laughs> so I, I actually saw a Vander Holyfield fight like two years ago here at the Hard Rock against uh, Vitor Belfort. And Vitor it was a legend the UFC guy, still in tremendous shape. I think he was like maybe low 40s at this time, and I think Evander was like 60. Vander came out and looked great physically, but like when he got in the ring, you could tell his reaction time were so bad. Mm -hmm. His reflexes were horrible. His punches were slow. Yeah. And I'm like, and he, and, he, and he got knocked out in like um, a round. Oof. And Vander Holyfield is top 10 boxer probably of all time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Father Time is undefeated. Right. So, th it, it, you know what? I, I just hope he don't get hurt. I mean, I really I hope he don't get hurt because it, this is, uh, <sighs> I think it's a lose-lose, but 
you know, it's a money grab. How much it's money? Just... Money grab. Yeah, money that's grab, exactly. Right, that's exactly. what I'm thinking. It's just for publicity for mm -hmm. them to get it. But I think it's just also you're beating up like an older man. Like it's just yeah. he's, 100. It just it to my. Why don't you pick a better like a a more someone, in their prime? Yeah, type it's of just person. someone that yeah. would be a little bit more. Like, hey, you're a boxer now. Hey, you've made it. Like, be exactly. a boxer. So that's yes. a great point. So, like, like so, so, you know, he's done exactly. a good job of marketing himself. And he's done a good job of proving himself. And listen, he's done a great job against, you know, former pro athletes that he knocked. He knocked out Tyron Woodley. I mean, Tyron exactly. Woodley Tyron Woodley was, was a bad mofo in his heyday, right? And that's why I, I, Jake Paul is legit. I, I actually tip my hat to him. The guy's a marketing genius. He made his mind up. He, he probably got the best trainers, the best sparring partners, and he's done a great job, right? Um, so I tip my hat to that. But it's, at the end of the day, it's like, yo, bro, you beat a 58-year-old 58, 58 guy up. I don't care who he is. It's still like, oh, bro. Yeah, but and, they're doing it for that reason because of the the Mike Tyson. It, it's it's all about though, like, nowadays. It's all about what's on, you know, what's social media and marketing. And I will tell you this, and I'm gonna go on record right now. If Jake Paul beats Mike Tyson, I want to see Jake Paul fight a legit. Legit boxer, yeah. Canelo, uh, uh, Benavides. I, I want to see him fight a legit boxer that because he runs his mouth and he's proved himself. But now it's time to take a step up. Like take a step up, bro. Because mm -hmm. didn't I was uh, under the Woodley fight? That's what I thought was his proven. Okay, he's okay. He's not just a YouTuber. I was YouTuber. shocked. I was shocked. He he, yep. he got yes. this. Let's go ahead and they'll make you a pro boxer. Yeah. Yes. But now that he's going out to fight Mike, it's almost like it's all about just publi publicity. publicity. That's it. And the because yeah. if he wanted to be a boxer, he would be like, I want to fight. I want to make my way. He doesn't want to be a boxer. Let's that, get that straight. That's it. Well, that's what he, I'm say. he doesn't want to be a boxer. He wants to, he wants to make a lot of money, and he is making a lot of money. So, yeah. I, again, I'm not hating. I tip my hat off to him. But at the end of the day, he's very strategic. But, again, no, like, let's be honest with you. The whole boxing world is strategic, right? They don't let the best fight the best. And even right now, what's going on with Canelo, right? And I think it's Benavides is his name, um, Dave Benavides or whatever it is. Yep. Canelo's ducking this dude for like two years, and now he wants like $150 million to fight him. But like, bro, like, Canelo, you're supposed to be the best in your era. You fight the best. The last three fights he's fought, I don't even know the boxers' names. Like, bro, why are you fighting guys that never heard of before? So – Again, I think, you know, Jake's just taking a book out of what the boxing committee does. Um, but at the end of the day, like, you know, if he wants to be a legit boxer, which I think he can be, I think it's pretty impressive what he's done. Fight a real boxer. Fight a real boxer. Maybe he don't want to get hurt, though, either. Yeah, like, I mean, too. if he's going to, if he's capable of making 50 million for yeah, a fight, yeah, so much fight. money yeah, for exactly. one That's a great fight. Point. Like, yeah. It's like, why would you go and do yeah. five fights with legitimate boxers when you can. Make I guess that so. much money off good of point. one fight. That's a good fight. Like I mean, it's kind of smart to be honest. His yeah. next fight is going to be like Elon Musk or something. Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's literally going to be what's going to happen. That's funny. Yeah, but um. Well, we're going to be all tuning in because yeah, we're talking it about is, uh, it. Interesting, it's, exactly. And that's what making everyone talk about it, right? You know, it's even sadder. What the heck is the NFL doing now? I mean, guys, come on, man. You are going to lose fans so fast. This is getting so pathetic. I, I need to ask this question. What is a hip drop tackle that you're banning? I want to know. I had the privilege to start in the NFL. I had the privilege to play in the NFL. I was a safety. My job was to get the running back or the receiver, whoever had the ball, on the ground. On the ground. That's it. Like, if he jukes me and I trip him up, whatever it is. What, how are you banning a hip drop tackle? So explain to me what that is. So a, basically, a hip drop tackle is, and, and listen, let me let me break something down to you as a, as, a, as a former DB in the NFL, a former safety. Which tackling is very very hard in general, especially when you go against guys like Adrian Peterson and the best in the world that have. If they had the football, they're the best in the world, right? And you're the best of the world at your position, but tackling is hard. A hip drop tackle is basically like you get you got kind of juked. And you're kind of like diving and you grab his kind of hip and pull him down to the ground. He kind of falls awkwardly, right? Mm -hmm. But if the, guy, if the guy jukes you, though, how you want me to get him on the ground? Yeah. How, how you want me to tackle him? Like I, I'm actually in. Wait, why would they ban that? I'm, why, in, why, yeah. I'm in awe right now. Because, What's bad like, guys, it? I don't think you understand. I, I can't even break it down to you because it doesn't make any sense about how what a hip drop tackle really is. Because... 
let me tell you something about tackling. You don't go in on a tackle in a split second and say, I'm going to tackle like a hip drop or I'm going <laughs> to yeah, tackle. You're not really thinking You're not about thinking. That. You're just like doing my, it. Like yeah. Our job as a defensive players is to put fear in offensive players is if they catch the ball, there's going to be a consequence. If you run through the hole, there's going to be a consequence. Now they should just put flags on these guys because like you're basically saying – if he jukes me and I'm out of position as a DB and I try to dive and grab his feet or grab his his his, his, his hips and try to pull him down, that's going to be a penalty. But why? What's dangerous about They're this? saying that just injury prone. They're saying that people get hurt from it. It's right? football. And it's you, not freaking ballet. So you know what's the craziest thing? I was actually with uh, I was actually with Ray Lewis last night and he actually was he was so disgusted and I've seen like Ryan Clark and some of these legends tweet out tweets like just just go ahead guys and put the flag on these players because this is getting so pathetic because like we were joking last night I was like Ray you play for free like literally Ray yeah. would Ray would be suspended every game right well, now. Well he was trending last week when this was going on and I love to look and I saw and most of it was the fact that because I don't know the whole specifics. There's no more. But yeah, they were gonna. They were saying that there's gonna be no more ever anymore. Like Ray Lewis Never. hits, and they had a compilation of Never. Ray's hits, and I was like, damn, and he did a lot of those that you're talking about now. That well, you know, you know what it is too, and this is this <laughs> the reality. That here's the reality, right? The NFL wants scoring. NFL wants offense. Offense brings numbers. Offense brings exper uh, excitement. Fans love when you score a touchdown, right? I mean, come on, like. I remember when I used to play, like the best feeling in the world was you have 80,000 people, right? And you're playing at home and this receiver catches the ball with a million. You just lay them out, ball pops out, and you just hear 80,000 people just erupt in excitement because you just laid a receiver out, right? There's no more of that now. There's, you're not going to see any of that no more. And what's sad is you're taking opportunities away from guys that play the game like that. Like now there's no more – Big safeties that hit hard. There's no more linebackers that are going to hit hard. They want athletic corners at safety, just like a tackle well. They want smaller bodies because you can't hit nobody no more. And, like, it's funny because for me, when I played, I thought the most dangerous tackle in football was knifing out somebody's knees. Yeah. They haven't banned that tackle yet, which blows my mind. Like, no so no weird. offensive player wants you to, to, to try to tackle at their knees. No. Nobody. Right? Why would you? So it's just, it, I think, you know what? I, I think the NFL needs to be real careful. I know they're trying to change like a kickoff rule now where like, I don't even want to get into that. But I just believe that these guys like Ray Lewis and these John Lynches and these these guys who set that tone of what football was supposed to be played like is just totally gone where the excitement of what like man versus man it's an alpha sport. It's a badass man sport. And you're taking it all away from us. And I think they need to slow down. Um, that's maybe, my two cents on the NFL. It's correlation of just the world and how, you know, we uh we're not we're not, fo I'm not without getting too politic uh into politics, but it's like we're not, you know, raising our our boys to be strong men no, anymore. No, absolutely not. They're little pussy. You're absolutely and, and you know what the crazy thing is? You're absolutely right. I think the other I, I think mean, the other factor comes down to is, you know, they don't want to say it openly, but um, you know, they they're covering their own asses, man, because they don't yeah. want no more concussion lawsuits. Yeah, no shit. They don't want billions and billions of dollars to go to concussion lawsuits, and I think it's bullshit because you're ruining the game. Like, we know what we signed up for. We know what we're playing. We love the game of football. We love the physicality of football. We love the contact of football, right? That's why you play the game. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, we used to have like a joke, like some people like on with no helmets in the off season was really good in football. They were really good. They would run routes, they would make interceptions, but all of a sudden you put the helmet and you put the pads on mm. and the whole game changes. And that's why it's a very, 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 very small selection in this world that makes to the NFL because you have to have the combination of being very athletic, very skilled, but also very tough. Yeah, and most kids have the athleticism. Most kids have the skill, but a lot of kids don't like to get hit. Right, they don't like to get hit in the mouth. Mm -hmm. So now a lot of people don't play football. Yeah, but now people are starting to come into football that are, that they don't care because it's it's a soft because they're soft becoming sport. softer. Yeah. You can't hit nobody. That's crazy. Yeah, if you're young and you're playing football and you have a bad hit, that would make a kid not want to play football. Oh, they, like, it would scare them. If you went to a park right and you saw a guy playing flag football and he was a stud. Right, running around everybody, juking everybody, faster than everybody. All of a sudden, you put a helmet and shoulder pads on him, you hit him in the mouth one time. All of a sudden, he says, eh, this sport ain't for me. I'm taking my helmet, I'm putting it on the sideline. That's what football is, right? 
That's what separated a great athlete that was tough and a great athlete that wasn't tough, that was soft. And you look at a guy like we talk about Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis is the greatest of all time, not only because he was he was gifted, but there was more people probably more gifted than he was. But he was a bad mm. motherfucker. He was tough. He was he wanted to he wanted to take your soul out there. Yeah, his and, his hits are like oh I like feel them when I watch that, them. I'm like God damn. But think about it though. There's a guy. Let's say today there's a guy just like that. He's never gonna make it anymore. No, he can't even play football anymore because no, he's gonna get a penalty after every penalty. single play. So the game is changing tremendously, and it's just to me, it's sad because you know it changed my life. I had the privilege to play six years in the NFL and and start an NFL team for a couple teams and and live my dream and and play the game that you know helped mold me into the man I am today. So I just don't like to see it, man. I get worked up, and I know a lot of I know a lot of players that in the past have gotten a little upset with this and. It's just kind of a sad reality. Like you said, maybe this is where our world's going to. Sabby, um, what about um, <clears throat> for athletes that are in the transition? Like they're still, they're vets, right? They're still there. How big of a impact is that going to be for them? Is it going to be really hard for them to transition? Uh, I'm just curious on that. Cause, That's a great question, Ben. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think uh, yes, the older guys. Um but here's the worst part, and actually, uh, it was brought up when I was talking about it the other day. They're banning the hip drop tackle, I think they call it, but they're not even explaining to us how to tackle him. So they don't even know how they want us to tackle. So the problem's gonna be is these players are not gonna know how to tackle somebody anymore, right? Even these guys that are really good, this high level, they're really good tacklers. You know, all most DBs, most safeties, most corners, most linebackers are great tacklers, right? But how do you to tackle now? Yeah, that's so, my question. So you're right. Yeah. So so it might transition to people that are on the cuff of, do I want to even play football anymore? Do I want to retire? Do I, you know, I can't hit nobody no more. Yeah, so that's for, true. for me, it's yeah, that's a great question. I, I don't know the answer exactly, but um, I think it's going to change the caliber of play. I think it's going to change the caliber of athletes you see. And I, I don't mean this in a disrespectful way. Um, you're going to see a lot of great, skilled, <clears throat> athletic people. You're not going to see a lot of tough people anymore. You're not going to see a lot of people that are like want to play the game of football because they know they don't need to be tough. It's okay. It's like how do you pull back when you're about to tackle someone? I have no because idea. you can't. You know what I mean? Like you can't. You, like you said, you don't think about it. You just go. You want to get them down. You're going to tackle Guys, them as hard as you can. Take it. Take football. it. Take it from my experience. Uh, I've had a lot of tackles and I've missed tackles. You know, and I've never got to a tackle thinking how I'm going to tackle somebody yeah. ever in my life. <laughs> yeah, ever. It's gonna, it happens so it's, fast. It's so fast. It's reactional. Um, it's physical. There's no time to think. There's no time. There's just time to react, play, and 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 and, and like again, it's like you're taking opportunities. Now the special teams is changing. You know, there used to be guys in the NFL that made a living on special teams. Most guys that it couldn't start, you know, there's only there's only one starter for each position. Those guys have to make their money on special teams. Now you're taking that away from them. So I don't know. It's it's I think it's a mess. I really do. Um I'm sorry people don't agree with me, but I think it's they're gonna lose a lot of fans. I really yeah, do. Probably will. So next subject. I don't want to get too much on so, NFL but <laughs> um Sab, you posted something uh this week that I'd like to bring up a quote about happiness. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, remember, being happy doesn't mean you have it all. It simply means you're thankful for all you have. I loved it. I loved it too, because I think it means a lot in the aspect of, you know, I think we're always so... Read it one more time. Read it one more time. I want them to hear that. Remember, being happy doesn't mean you have it all. It simply means you're thankful for all you have. I think it's great because I think we're always so, you know, worried about where we're going next, what what we're gonna achieve next, our next goal, our next, which is great, you know, you know that's that's how life goes on and everything. But it's like if you sit back and really be thankful for what you have, rather than thankful for what you don't have yet, and then one day maybe you do have, and you'll be thankful for that. But you know, focus. It's kind of like how we always talk about focusing on the present moment. But it's like being thankful for what you have is more important than waiting on what you don't have mm -hmm. in a sense, right? Absolutely. I uh, I actually get a little goosebumps when you read that because I think, and we preach it, have goals, have ambitions, have a work ethic toward it. Um, but being present in the moment and being grateful for the little things will change your whole perspective on life. Yep. And I, I'm starting to, as I get older and older, I'm really starting to realize that. 
Yeah. Um, and I think it's always great to have gold. And like I said, you know, we're always working every day to better ourselves mm -hmm. financially, physically, mentally, and that's great. Um, but there's not a day that I don't start five to 10 minutes in full gratitude mode, yep. full appreciation mode, thanking God for everything I have, everything that he's blessed me with. And I personally believe it's changed me personally. Um, and I think uh, that's, and social media can get people in so much trouble because you go on social media and you're like, oh, look at that person has that car. Mm -hmm. This person has that house. They're so much happier than me, but it's not true. Yeah. And that's why your happiness is is basically all up to you and how you want to view your life and be grateful because we all have things we can complain about. Mm -hmm. We all have things that we could focus on, focus on the negative about. But if you really focus on the positives, like like having a job is a blessing. Don't say I have to go to work. Say I get to go to work, right? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I get to go to work. There's a lot of people that don't have a job in this world, right? Right? Yeah. Like little things like that will change your perspective on life. Um, Definitely. And I don't know. I, I did love that the quote. More, the more you know, thankful you are and the more you practice gratitude, I truly believe is what makes you feel like you're unstoppable and the way that you want to continue and achieve those goals. It's because you're so grateful for what you have and you know you work so hard for that and you want to keep up this lifestyle or whatever it may be that, you know, it makes you keep going and it makes you, you know, be more happy, be happier when you wake up and, and be blessed and just be, um, be so, you know, grateful for everything that you have because you worked hard for it and you want to continue to keep working hard to achieve more goals and get better and evolve Absolutely. and keep, you know, uh, getting better every day. So that was a great, great, I mean, great quote. We quote. all know tomorrow's not guaranteed. And, yep. uh, <clears throat> we all saw what happened last week in Baltimore. I mean, that, that's so scary oh, with that God, bridge. That was so scary. Thank oh God. You know, it, it's, it's, it's crazy that it happened at one thirty at night. Cause I think it would have, if it was one mm. thirty during the day, it would have been way different. Oh, cash catastrophic. I mean, I know, I think there was six cars in the water and there was six people uh, uh, missing accounted for. And I think they said they were all workers, Yeah. which is uh, prayers to their family. Um, that's, so uh, I'm so sorry to hear that. But again, that's just a perfect example of like, you know, tomorrow's not guaranteed. So mm -hmm. be grateful for today. Um, have goals, have, have a uh, vision, have work ethic, but be grateful. Just be grateful. Take, take a moment every day to thank God, thank the Lord for what you have and yep. it will go so far. Very true. So, um, we will be on, a. well, actually, no, we are on a new platform for the podcast and not only for the podcast, but we will be doing more longer formed content, which you see uh, the first video that was uploaded is a whole behind the scenes um, day to day of my signing in New York. So we are now on OnlyFans TV platform, which is really exciting. Hell yeah. <laughs> I think it's time for me to get my OnlyFans like John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> However, OnlyFans TV is safe for work. It's different than um OnlyFans. It's actually really cool. I was on uh, the other day kind of just like experimenting and going through and it, it's really great content. I mean, it's similar to YouTube. <clears throat> they say it's like a combination of like YouTube and Netflix in a sense. So it's really cool. Um, quality of the videos are amazing. Really great stuff. I'm going to be doing a lot more content. Um, just different stuff day to day, more lifestyle, fitness, cooking, um, you know, behind the scenes action, photo shoots, all that good stuff. So go check it out. Um, and we will be uploading our podcast every Monday on there as well. Um, until we are like up to date with our episodes. So just another platform we're very excited about. Um, and, uh, yeah, make sure you guys go check that out. Uh, we have some questions to answer. Love questions. Uh -huh. We have actually a lot of questions to answer, but I'm going to pick the best ones. But um, before that, I want to talk about um, a question that we got to our Power Alphas podcast at gmail.com email. Um, if you guys don't know, please send your questions in at Power Alphas podcast at gmail.com to, you know, these questions could be a little more elaborate, whatever they, whatever you want them to be, but we like to um, kind of bring them up in the episode and talk about them because we are on the road to WrestleMania, we are going with this question. And it's from former WWE writer Dave Schilling. He revealed a bit ago that I was supposed to win WrestleMania 35 at the Showcase of the Immortals. Is it true? So this is a common question I get a lot. And I spoke a little bit on um, Mackenzie Mitchell's 
YouTube video uh, recently. Um, and I had to kind of refresh my memory because it was a little bit, it was a little hard to remember because everything just moved so fast. But yes, there was a situation for that WrestleMania 35 where I did have an opportunity to possibly face Asuka for the championship and maybe win it. It's all a maybe, you know, I know the social media kind of blew up from it and people got, you know, got wind of it and they were wondering what had happened and all these things. There, nothing specifically happened, to be honest. Um, you know, in my whole career, I never really got excited about something until it was like right smack in my face and like ready to go through the curtains. It was a definite because things change so much in WWE that you, it's hard to get excited because you don't want to get your hopes down. I'm um, sorry, you don't want to get your hopes up. And then when you get your hopes up and you get, you know, things change, it's like really kind of um, upsetting because you got your hopes up and now it's like, oh, you know, back to the drawing board. So I never really got excited about this. It was when Sonya Deville and I were in a storyline with Asuka. Um, Asuka was the women's champion. And at the time they decided to go a different route and have her and Charlotte go into a program right before mania because then they had the um main event of ronda versus charlotte versus becky so plans changed it is what it is um you know it's what are you gonna do i mean there was an opportunity maybe that no one really came up to me to say like hey you're gonna face oscar and you're gonna win the championship so it, I don't know even know where that rumor started, but um, it could have been a possibility that maybe I didn't even really know about. Um, so yeah, that was the, to my knowledge, the best ex explanation I can explain uh, from that. But everything is just so happened so fast, and everything's just like so. You're just all it's over like the blur. place. It's a big blur. Yeah. Like yeah, it's and it's like I just never really got too excited until it was like really right there and you know happening because. You just, it was always just, you know, get your hopes up for, uh, shit, you know, so whatever. I, so, so you became double champion later. Yeah. And you know, everything happens for a reason. Maybe if I did go that route, I wouldn't have had the career that I did in NXT and, and whatnot. So, um, that is that. But anyway, another email that we have. Hi, Mandy and Sabby. Loving the podcast. The title of your podcast is Power Alpha. So I want to know what is the biggest power move you have made in life? It may not have seemed like one at a, one at the time, but is there a moment that you feel was pivotal to your growth as an individual, mentally, physically, love or career? Anything really? Thank you, Darianne. Great question. That is a great question, actually, wow. Darianne. I like that one. And it's very like uh it explains a lot what we talk about about this podcast mm -hmm. throughout our episodes so do you want to answer that first babe mm. well she asked in a relationship and or in anything career? really in life like where was the biggest power move you made in life um and maybe it didn't seem like it at the time but was it a pivotal moment mm. to your growth as an individual absolutely um great question great question i think me as a man my biggest power move was, uh, how do I say this, was realizing that as a man, when you meet a woman like Mandy, that uh, you have to be all in committed in every aspect of the, of the relationship. Um, and you kind of always, how you do one thing is how you do all things, right? So for me as a man, I personally believe when I made the decision as a man to uh, do everything in my power to be a, the best boyfriend, the best partner, um, the best significant other, I think our relationship grew so much and I think it expanded so much where just endless amount of opportunities together. I think we've grown so much together. Um, and I think personally for me as a man, it just comes down to like a man is listening. It just comes down to either you're all in or you're not. And uh, I think life is about doing the right thing and life is about committing. And when you commit, you commit. Um, so for me, it was like the mindset of, you know, some guys are afraid to commit. And even like, you know, me and Mandy first started dating, you know, she had her past, I had my past. And it's not that I was cheating or not like that. It was just more like, you know, are we all in here? Are we not all in here? Um, do, do you get vulnerable? 
Do you open your heart? Do you tell somebody how much you love them? And for me, my best decision I ever made in my life was to know and make sure that I was the best significant other for Mandy. And I knew I would never lose her again. I would never let her go. And I would never do anything to kind of hurt our relationship. And I feel like as a man, when I made that decision, everything just went sky high for us. Everything changed, I think, for me in our relationship. So I guess the biggest power move I made as a man was to be fully committed to the relationship in every aspect of it. Um, and I think that changed me forever. Mm, thanks, babe. That That's was just really sweet. My two cents. I like that one. That was really good. I feel like I'm not going to top that. So uh, <laughs> that was good, right, Ben? <laughs> Ben's crying. Oh my God. <laughs> I almost shed a tear too. Oh, shit. So give me a tissue. But it's the truth. I mean, no, and listen, sure. if I had a message out there to these guys, please, man, um, we all do it, right? We all think we're the man and we're the shit and we can get these girls and we can get this. But when you find a woman, man, when you find a woman, be a man. Do the right thing and uh, it'll change your life, I promise you. And, and I mean this in a humbling way. I mean this in a humbling way. You know, I had no problem getting dates, but at the end of the day, when you focus your energy on one woman and you focus your energy on becoming the best significant other, everything will change, man. You live right, you'll get rewarded, I promise you. I promise you, I, I promise you. No, it's for sure true. And I think as a woman, you could relate a little bit in the aspect of like, you know, I know the stigma out there of men of, you know, maybe wanting different uh, you know, multiple women or they just, they can't settle down. The commitment, like you said, um, I think when you find the right one, I do agree with that, that, you know, your mindset changes and not every man is like that. I'm not saying every man's like that at all. Um, and to kind of piggyback off what you're saying, because someone commented the other day on one of our videos, because I guess you made us, you said something about our past or whatever it was. They're like, oh man, he must have cheated on her or something. It was like, it was brought up. So I was like, where do you get that from? So to clarify, when Savvy brings it up about, um, you know, the two of us, we had a very, we were really good friends when we first started dating and we both had our past and we both were still in WWE and chasing our dreams. And, you know, maybe our focus wasn't so much in being in, in a commitment or a relationship, I would say for the both yeah, of us, really. Absolutely. I had gotten out of a really long relationship, to be honest, and he was in a kind of back and forth relationship for a while. So I think we took a little time to really commit to each other. So I don't want to like copy what you're saying and in my um answer for this question but there is some similarity in the sense of like kind of finally settling settling down with you and realizing that you know we do want to be with each other get rid of all the other bullshit get rid of the shit that don't matter um you know focus on us it's it we were just ready and i think you also don't have to rush that you know if there was a time when we were both chasing and living in different cities and whatnot so i feel like maybe we weren't ready at that time frame but then when we decided like we were and it was like we put everything um you know, for us, we, we made everything about us, Everything was about us, yeah. which I think was a big pivotal moment for the both of us, um, because I think it takes time for a couple to realize that, you know, they want to be together or they want to start a family together or buy a house together and all these different things. So I could agree with that with us. And I think just to clarify that, like where, how we we talk about our relationship, you know, we both had our past. And and an another thing I would say for me, the biggest power move as well would be like and we've talked about this before, is just uh, not really giving a fuck what anyone Absolutely. says or does or Absolutely. thinks of you. I think because we are in the public eye and social media and you get pulled from a lot of different directions on social media and people's comments and opinions and all these things, like I think for a while I did care what people maybe thought of me or what maybe they might think of me if I do this or if I don't do this or whatever it may be. But now I'm at a point in my life where I really don't give a fuck what anyone, excuse my language, I don't give a crap. I love it. No, I love it. Anyone says what they, like Like we always say, nobody's coming to pay your bills. Um, nobody's coming to save you. Like at the end of the day, do what makes you happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? No, that's that's some of the best advice you can give out there. And I think we all, I think you went through it, I went through it. And as we're getting older, you realize like, 
uh, nobody's opinion matters except for yours yeah. and your own, right? Yeah. And everyone's gonna have an opinion about of you, course. right? I mean, listen, everybody's gonna knock what you do for a living, what I do for a living, what he does for a living. Everyone has something to say. And that's another thing that I've tried to transition my life. I don't wanna be around people that always talk shit about other people, Ugh. right? Yeah, that's why like, I've, I've literally, my, that's why my circle's small and I've cut out multiple women in my life because when you're around them and all they do is talk about other people, it's like, bitch, what are you saying about me? I leave? Yes. Like and, that, like that you know, and TikTok you, I did. You, it's and you, so true. And you know what though? You take that out of your life. Mm -hmm. I promise you, you'll see a difference in your life. Negativity. The negativity. You'll see it so quick. Yep. And that's something for me personally as a man. It's hard because you might have family members that have that negative energy. You might have people, best friends that have that negative energy, and you have to make a decision. Like, do I want that energy in my life anymore? Yeah. And 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 this is not a knock on reality. And I don't even view success as money, but like you can view people's success on how they just talk, on how they just conversate with people, how they down belittle people. Like it, it's you'll never you'll never meet somebody talking shit about you that's doing better than you. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like I've loved that quote because that's the truth. So for me, it's like. Um, you know, don't care, don't care what anybody says. Like, take care of you, take care of your family, and nobody's coming to help you. I love those quotes right there. I love that too. Yeah, so, That's, well, listen. Well, we have some more questions. We have another question? <laughs> oh, sorry. Were you, were you trying oh, to wrap sure. up? No, I, I mean, yeah, we're rolling here. <laughs> well, I have, um, yeah. We have more questions to get I there. have all these questions for that okay. I did today when I did the Q&A thing. <laughs> Um, I guess he's, his, uh, his tea time's calling him, guys. <laughs> no, ain't no golf today. No golf today, buddy. Yo, she always makes jokes. Ben, I golfed once this week, but she'll say once, seven, though. Once. She'll say seven times. Oh, no, times. sorry. You're right. Tonight's poker I've night. I've golfed once. Shit. I've golfed once. Poker night tonight, I right? I, I have to hear this. Poker nights tonight? Yeah, I think I you're like a professional golfer at no, this point. At, at this point, I think. I'm sure he's not the only sure one. Not professional. He's getting really good, guys. He's got a whole new set of clubs. Yeah, right. I did get a new set of clubs, though. <laughs> um, okay, so... We're gonna answer a couple questions. We have a few minutes left. Um, uh, we, we love your questions. So first question, what advice would you give to someone that wants to get into fitness and struggling to start? It's a good question. I think the biggest struggle is starting and you know getting there, but once you start, I know it sounds cliche, like it sounds, but it, it gets so much easier. I mean, mm -hmm. the consistency that we always talk about and um, just getting a routine. Actually, Savvy this week um, was talking to one of our friend's sons who's in his 20s, great kid, and he was telling him about, you know, he's like, just do me a favor and follow my routine for what? I didn't say mine. I said well, no, create no, a routine. Create a routine he asked but, me mine. Yeah, but he's going to follow yours because he no, wants he's to. Not. No, he's not. No, he's not. Have you checked up on him? <laughs> he's not going to follow mine. Logan? <laughs> Logan. But Well, I said, I, I piggybacked because I do, I said, well, maybe not your routine specifically, but follow a routine, which is fine. So a I routine. would say for your for advice for that is try to get a routine, just get to the gym, do something, start slow, work your way up, don't push yourself, you know, until you feel confident in there, don't hurt yourself. Just just walk on the treadmill, get on the bike, do something that's very um you know, not that strenuous at first and just just get there and and work your way up. Uh, you know me, I preach routine. I read a routine quote a couple podcasts ago. I actually saw a tweet that was kind of funny. It said, be boring, be boring. Work out at the same time, eat at the same time, yeah. and go to bed at the same time. And that's a great way to put it, honestly. That's true. And that's a routine, right? And I'm so adamant on, mine's Monday through Friday, because that's for me, Monday through Friday is like the work week, the work cycle for me. And for me, it's like, a routine keeps me balanced. A routine keeps me therapy. A routine keeps my mind from wandering. And, mm -hmm. oh, like I'm a piece of shit. I didn't do much today. Oh, I got up at 8 o'clock on a freaking Wednesday. What the heck am I doing kind of thing? That's, that's, that's laziness. So, like, for me. 8 o'clock um, ain't, ain't that late. I mean, it's kind of late. On, on a weekday, it's kind of late. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, but, uh, like, for me, I preach routine, man. So, um, and again, that, kind of piggyback on that question. Like Mandy said, once you get started, don't stop. Create a routine. Create a time frame, um, and one of the best quotes I, you know, I lived by when I was playing. And I guess again, I was, you know, I had the privilege to work out for a living, but like I used to work out and then do my day. A lot of people start their day and put workout in their day somewhere. Nah, see that that's backwards. I think I think you need to work out and then form your day around that. So that'd be my two cents to that. I like that. That's good. Very good. 
Uh, next question. Um, sorry, a lot of these are really funny, so I have to go through them. I can't say all of them. Uh, da, 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 da. Who will win at WrestleMania, Bailey or Io Sky? I'm rooting for Bailey. I hope Bailey wins. I think she deserves this win. She's an amazing competitor and friend of mine. She's always looked out for me throughout my career. I'm pulling for Bailey. Um, I, she does so many things for other people. She's very, very selfless. And I think she really deserves a big WrestleMania win. I think it's going to be a great match versus her and EO Sky. They have a lot of, um, a lot of um, history that they, um, you know, been been fighting through. And Bailey's idea was to kind of bring EO and Dakota back into that group. So Bailey did a lot for them. Now, so it's it's just a cool story. So I really hope Bailey's going to win for that. I'm pulling for Bailey. Um, babe, what is your favorite vacation spot? I know what it is. Bahamas. Mm-hmm. Bahamas our for favorite, a lot of reasons. Our favorite vacation spot is Bahamar. Bahamar. It is the new Bahamas resort. You would yep. say it's, you know. Better fairly for, new. Yeah, fairly new. Five years now. I think. Um, they have the Grand Hyatt, Rosewood, and SLS. We love all those three, mostly Rosewood and Grand Hyatt. They have the casino. Excuse me. Clean. Can't smoke. Clean. Beautiful. Um, everything's all right there. It's just a really great place. Anyone that ever talks about vacation spots, we always recommend it. So easy to get to from Florida. So if you guys haven't checked out Baja Mar, check it out. It's a great place. Katsui, favorite oh, restaurant. Oh, Katsui the Katsui so at Baja Mar is the best. So good. Katsui there is. But the is. one in Miami is disappointing compared yeah, to that. Yeah, that one that we went to with SLS, right? Yep. Um, do, 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 do. Let's do one more question. we got to save some for another show, babe. Yeah, I know. You got, you got somewhere to go? Got a good one. Something? Got a good one. <laughs> I'm trying. It's hard to go shoot, go look through these. I was rushing here. My dog was constipated, remember? Yeah, well, um, not your dog. No, it was your dog. Nope. I saved your not, dog's life not last mine. night. No, you didn't. You didn't do anything, but yes, cheer I him did. on. Cheer him on. Are you kidding me? My dog was choking. You she was like, babe, I got to call me. What are you calling you me for? You should have been there for him. Oh, I should have been there. Okay. Um. Uh. Da, 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 da. uh Okay. Um, do you think leaving WWE was one of the best decisions you made? I think so, they said. Um, I think it was a little bit of a blessing in disguise. Um, I never like to really talk badly about WWE. I'm grateful for the platform. I'm grateful for the... Um, I'm grateful for everything and the platform that it uh, presented itself with. However, I think what had happened kind of just, you know, you just never know something, a new opportunity arises, one door closes, another one opens. So um, am I grateful for all my fans? Of course, I wouldn't be here today without, you know, I wouldn't be as successful as I am today without all those fans out there. So I'm grateful for everything. But I think um, it was a pretty good decision in, in a sense. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I think I've answered that plenty of other times as well. Game changer. Yeah, for sure. Okay, um, so we'll answer some more questions our next episode because there's a lot here. Um, thank you guys for listening. Also, I wanted to announce my coffee table book is still available if you guys want to order that. Um, and if you bring them to my signings, I will sign it for you. That is available. The link is in my bio. Um, so go check it out. There's about over 200 exclusive photos there. Um, it's a really cute book. So also, we're on a new platform, OnlyFans TV. You can now find us, um, our podcast. You can find uh, longer vlog-formed content of myself and Sabby. And we are also still on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So go check us out. Make sure you like and subscribe. Um, we're very grateful for everyone listening. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.